Hi, I'm Mark from the Landscape Academy and today we're going to look at London Stone's guide for the installation of natural riven sandstone. Part of the charm with natural stone is the variances you get with each product, such as colours, shapes and sizes. Remember to mix your packs to give an even distribution of the colour. Measure and mark out the area with the recommended fall rate. Carefully excavate the area. Install a geotextile membrane for stability and structure. For a domestic patio, add a minimum of 100 millimeters of compacted MOT Type 1 hardcore. You may need to add more depending on the ground conditions and the end use. Consolidate at 50 to 75 mil depths with a compactor plate. Measure and set out string lines for paving installation and make sure to allow for the appropriate fall rate for the product. We've got a really, really good, solid, firm, well compacted sub base. So now we're going to look at the installation of the Indian sandstone paving. It's important that you use a string line with a natural ribbon product. There's loads of variations in the undulations of the paving. Spirit levels are great but they're a guide. When you put a spirit level on something that's got a large undulation in it, it rocks. So there's no way you can get a true line. So the advantage with string lines is you put your string lines in, you can lay your paving. And then a little tip that we use is things like, if your string line just moves slightly like that across the top of the paving, you're covering all planes. So in other words, you've got the paving slightly under the line, but you can allow for little high spots, low spots, but it will hopefully give you a reasonably consistent fall in either direction. Apply a full mortar bedding layer. Ratios vary around the country, depending on the materials in your area. Here we've used a mix of coarse sand and cement at a five to one. Continue to spread out the mortar and smooth to a full bedding layer to ensure full contact. Apply a primer to the back of the paving slab. Don't put the primer on the edges of the paving slab because this may transfer to the face when handling the stone. Primer is recommended to ensure a secure adhesion to the bedding layer. Place the paving slab on top of the full mortar bed and gently tap down to meet the required levels using the string lines as your guide. We're using a white rubber mallet to prevent damaging or marking the paving. We've got a few slabs laid now. One of the things that we need to consider when we're laying this product is obviously it comes in various sizes because this is a product that comes from a quarry that's hand cut. So what we've got to try and look at is we've got to try and look at consistency in joints. Very difficult, it will vary ever so slightly. We're probably looking at somewhere between 10 and 15 mil max on your joints. Make sure that when you lay, you get a full bed so you don't get anywhere with big recesses down the side of the paving. But as you can see, it's reasonably consistent in the size of the depths and the widths of the beds. When cutting natural stone, it's important to use the correct machinery and blades. London Stone have a good range of equipment. Check out their website for more details. When cutting, always remember to follow the HSE regulations and wear the appropriate PPE. London Stone's natural stone paving offers high quality, value for money and works well with almost any style. 